<laughs> FIT Talks is the oral history program of the Fashion Institute of Technology, directed by Karen Trivet, Head of Special Collections. Today, September 13th, 2018, we are ta taping in the <coughs> Library of the University in New York City with Mrs. Dorothy Roberts from Echo, from the Echo Design Inc. Just say Echo. Just Echo, okay. My name is Phyllis Dillon, and I will just give you a, a quick overview of Mrs. Roberts' career. Dorothy Roberts is the chairman of Echo Design Group, Inc., probably the most well-known scarf company in the United States. Their accessory line includes scarves, wraps, and outerwear, ponchos and ruanas, cold weather accessories, mufflers, hats and gloves, swimwear and beach, beach cover-ups and bags. In home, they work with Kravit in the designer area and with them design wallpaper, fabric, rugs and trim. They also design bedding, bath and window treatments with JLA and table linens with R. Lee. The company was founded on their wedding day, September 27, 1923, by her parents, Edgar C. Hyman and Teresa Marks Hyman. And this year, the company will be 95 years old. Mrs. Roberts started working there in 1950. In the 1970s, Dorothy Roberts and her husband, Paul, took over and ran Echo. He became president, but they were equal partners and shared equal responsibilities for half of the business areas. In March 1978, he died, so Dorothy Roberts became president and CEO. Known for its silk printed scarves, Echo signed a license with Polo Ralph Lauren in the 1980s. They do polo men's, polo women, Lauren and chaps. Echo also does private label, private label for Coach, Brooks Brothers, Talbots, J. Jill, and Dress Barn, to name a few. They also do private label for museums, such as the Metropolitan Museum of Art, MoMA, Smithsonian, and the, and the Art Institute of Chicago, and have also worked with artists, such as Christo, on the Gates Project. It is my pleasure to welcome Mrs. Roberts, whose firm has designed so many beautiful items. So first, Mrs. Roberts, can you talk a bit about the founding of Echo and your parents? On there, my father had worked for, as a salesman, for two veiling companies, and they didn't pay him. They both went out of business. So as he, had, and, and my mother had planned to get married on September 27, 1923, and they were going to court. He said, we're going to start a business after we get married, and it's going to be a scarf business, because that was close to the, the, what the people made. They made veilings. So they did that, and uh, they started in a little office, and they did everything themselves for a long time. And they just did scarves, nothing else. And uh, I know he started going to Europe and buying. And at that time, we didn't do anything with the Orient at all. But um, you know, they learned all about printing and, and silk. And they really did a great job. And my mother decided we should put the name, oh, she got the name Echo from Edgar C. Hyman. That was my father's name, and the O was from Echo. So at the first place we had our office was at, uh, at right across in the public library, and we were on the fourth floor. So across the fourth floor, it said Edgar C. Hyman Company Incorporated, and the E-C-H-O was in red, and the rest was in blue, so that that's where she got the name from, and that's, which I thought was pretty clever. <laughs> so um, for many years, we, we stayed there for many years. We didn't move to our current place till uh, around Christmas in 1976. And 
And so just the two of them started. The other thing that she wanted the printers to do, she wanted the name Echo on every scarf because she wanted the printer to realize that he should use the best quality of printing and work the hardest to make it perfect when it had our name on. So, uh, so they did that too. Right. And um, other members of the family became involved also, right? Yeah, well, my, my mother stopped coming to work when she had me. So my, her sister, my aunt, came and she really loved merchandising and fashion and everything, so she was great. Right, and you, you told me that when you were seven years old, yeah. your parents took you to Europe. Yes. Um, was that on a, on a regular business trip? It was a regular business trip. We were going to London, Paris, Switzerland, Bern, Switzerland, and Como, Italy. And our iMagnon buyer, which was a very fine store on the West Coast, which is non-existent now, they were bought by Federated. She got me a long green dress because when you go to the Villa Desk and you eat dinner, you have to be dressed formally. So anyway, so I made this trip, which I still remember because in you know, London, oh, my parents got a, um, uh, somebody to take care of me in each place because they were working. So you don't want me to tell you all the funny stories that happened. <laughs> okay. No, but um, you learned about the business because right. at home. Right. right. Well, they talked all about the business all the time. And my husband used to say the only way you could get away from the business with my father was to dive under the water because he talked about it all the time. So, um, and interesting to me was that my father had no money and he didn't, he couldn't go to college, but my mother went to University of Chicago and then she became a teacher, but my father learned about everything. He knew everything. So he's the one who really taught me everything. Yes, and you also told me a story about how when you would visit um, the different cities and the department stores, right. how uh, your father uh, would teach you how to learn to look. You're right. Like if we went to and we saw the window of a store, he'd say, look in the window and look at this. And then he said, turn around and now tell me what was in that window. <laughs> so I had to learn that. Then he took me to all the museums and you know, told me everything about the business and the customers and all of this, so. And then, do you want to get to when I get to work? Sure. Okay. So, I, we actually, I worked during holidays or vacations, but I never, you know, worked full time. But anyway, we, then my husband graduated from college before me and my father asked him to come in the business which he did, and then when I, I got, I graduated from college one Sunday, got married the next Sunday, went on a two week honeymoon, my father said, be there July 2nd, which was the day before I, day after I got back. So anyway, and then they handed me a clipboard, and they said, this is your clipboard, and we were, as I said, at, across from the public library, we had a small office. We only had 10 employees. So, um, so he gave me the clipboard and he said, now go around to everyone in the office and ask them what they want done and you do it. So then my main task was to enter, in this day and age it's very odd because there were little white cards and you entered every order on the little white card and did it alphabetically. And then at the end of the month, you went onto a big yellow card this size and you wrote the month. And then at the end of the year, you added up that store 
and you saw how much they bought. You know? So I did that. I loved doing that. I learned the name of every customer all over the United States and every town. When we traveled, my father always would test me on the states and the cities in each state. And so and I traveled a lot in the United States, so I knew a lot of the, uh, and had been to a lot of the stores. So. Um, Let's talk a bit about the scarves, because people may not know that um, you were making silk, primarily silk scarves yes. in the early years. Yes. And this was a, a European tradition. Right. Right? Right. So that, uh, did your father buy the fabric separately and then work with factories? No. Or he, no, my, my father went over to Europe. He went to England, France, Italy. He found research, and Switzerland. We did things, we did um, wools like chalet, it was called. We don't call it chalet anymore, but anyway, uh, in Switzerland. So we went there to buy the Swiss chalets and everything. So, um, and then in Italy, he did, he, they started working, and my aunt did this too. They started working with all the best people. And uh, so, were there family a factory that did the hemming and the? They hemming? did. They did everything. They, did they everything. printed, uh -huh. and then they uh, did the hand rolled edge, which people don't do anymore or not often. And they they finished. The, it was the best silk, and you know the quality of everything from there was really good. So uh, you knew many of these. Uh, manufacturers, yes, right? yes, yeah. So, and some of them are still there, like in in Como, Ratty, and Montero. They're still there. Right. Some of the others aren't, but they are. But yeah. they're they came another factory. This I hadn't told you. Another factory came over a few years ago, and he wanted me to buy thirty six inch squares, which was the size of the silk squares that most people bought. And when I first made the trip, I remembered that they were $6.36 each. And then we sold them for $30, $40, whatever. Anyway, uh, I forget what we sold them for, but anyway. Then when he sat here three years ago and told me he wanted me to buy, I said, what is the first cost now? He said, $50 for a 36 inch square. I said, well, that's what people would like to pay retail. So that was the end of that. <laughs> we still do quite a bit in Italy, but not in scarves. So uh, one thing that I found remarkable is that um, you, didn't, you didn't have a design department per se right. until much later. Yeah, we, we didn't. We bought designs and we had sometimes people who did them in-house, but most of the time we bought the designs. And then we had someone for years who ran design, product development, and operations. This is just for Echo and did fine, no problems, you know. Yes. And, uh, so, and then we did have someone who came in and worked with us on color. Okay, you know. but when, I, when you told me this, you, yeah. you, I said, well, who had the eye? Who, who was the brilliant? Well, we weren't brilliant. We but, just, that but, was what we had to learn. Well, from, from looking at, a, at fabric over and over and right. over, you develop an eye, I guess. Well, it, it's funny because we, we also went to Lyon. When we were in Paris, we went to Lyon, and we ended up buying all our designs, most of our designs there. Then we ended up later, years later, buying some in England and sometimes here. But the Lyon had fabulous designers. And I was working with someone one day who was a manufacturer, and I saw all these blue books, all along the whole wall. And I said, what are those? He said, we put down the designer who designed this, the factory who made it, and 
when we delivered it and all of that. So then when I looked at this, I thought, great idea. And I did see a few designer names in. So we started buying from eight or 10 design firms in individual people, really. They were firms, but it was one main person. One of them was did the best Paisleys in the world. Another one did geometrics. And so, you know, we, another one did flowers. And so that, it was very exciting. And we got the blue books, and we did the same thing. And, and your archive is where? Well, we moved our archive out to a, we now have a distribution center out in New Jersey. So we used to have it all together in New York. Then, uh, so it's been in New Jersey for a long time. Yes, but it's also on, in your computer system? It's in our computer system too. So they, we use a lot of our archives all the time. Yes, I, I think on your website, you have very interesting history that shows chronologically the scarves from decade to decade. And I have to go look at it. <laughs> I've seen our website, but I don't remember seeing that. Yeah, so actually one can see the fashion changes. And That's interesting. From uh, decade to decade. Yeah. It's, 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 it's very good. And that's where I learned that uh, in the 40s that the, uh, that Echo uh, worked for the war effort. That's right. Because, you know, we couldn't import anything during the war. So my father had to go to, he went to Pennsylvania and uh, New Jersey and he found some factories who could print. You know, they're all not existent now. But uh, we did that because we couldn't go anywhere. Yeah, and some of them were patriotic. Yeah, he did. Well, first we did the Constitution and the uh, Declaration of Independence. And Stephen, my son, says that the, we gave it to his school and it used to hang up there as you walk in the school. But then he also was an air raid warden and everything, yeah, so he, he did on saying how, how to yeah. get, if there's an air raid, what to do, and all that. So we did a whole series of that. Right. Yeah. So you, you, um, you were thrust into the leadership of the, of the company? Well, I, I always wanted to go there to work. Yes. So I wasn't thrust into leadership okay. because I, I did, I, for a year, few years, I did the, all the clipboards. And then they made me showroom girl. Okay. And they, I waited on every single person who came into the showroom. We had a little showroom. So, and then, uh, and then, of course, then it's a few years after that, we moved to the new space. But, you know, so I knew all the customers and we traveled and I loved going to all the stores. And of course, in those days, you had three big stores and five to seven specialty stores in every city. Mm -hmm. And now you have one or two big stores and one of them might not be doing so well and some have gone out of business. And then the specialty stores like Kansas City, which was one of my favorite cities, they, we had seven good specialty stores. And now there are two left. Mm -hmm. And not the same as they were, you know, so. But we do, we do business with department stores and specialty stores, and we love both, you know. Right. So you became uh, president and CEO uh, after the death of your husband. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Boy, it we sounds skipped terrible. a lot of years. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's go back then. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, yeah, but when we, when we worked together, we divided up the whole business. So I had design, product development, and operations for that, mm -hmm. but not for everything else. And then I had advertising and publicity and sales. And then my husband did everything else. <laughs> he, 
he did human resources and he did all the financial and he did the running of all the operations of the business. And I had never hired or fired anybody in my life when after he, until after he died. So that, you know, I ended up doing a lot of those things. But, but it, it worked and, it, and for a good part of that, I was able to work three days a week because we only work from 9 to 5.30, and now you work from 8 to 6 or 7, and uh, then you went home, you know, and you had plenty of time to be with your children. And one day my son said, Tuesday and Thursday are his favorite days. Yeah. And that, those are the days I was sitting in the chair waiting for him. <laughs> so... Um, when uh, in the late in the later years, the the eighties, um, you became uh, the licensee. Was that was something that you? Oh, yeah. No, we have been asked by a lot of people to uh, license, and we said no to everyone. But in nineteen eighty three, Ralph Lauren asked us to do scarves. And Stephen said, look, if we're going to do it, we should do it with the best. So we've been with them 35 years. Yes. And St Stephen, Stephen, your son, Stephen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, well, that was after my husband had died. Right. So, because he died in 78. So, um, then, you know, uh, so then I ran the business. Uh, you know, we had a lot of people working for us, including Stephen. Lynn had joined the firm, my daughter, and then Stephen had joined the firm after he uh, finished college in 78, the same year. So, uh, and then we had other people who worked for us, and my aunt. But then, by then, she had gotten sick. So, she didn't end up working that much yeah. any longer, really. So do you want to show us some of the things you've Oh, brought? sure. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Smithsonian. We, we had never done special scarves for anybody, and the Smithsonian came to us in 1976, and they wanted us to do a bandana, and it was this. And uh, so we replicated this in red and blue. Am I doing it upside down? Yes. <laughs> and we did it for the centennial in uh, 19, so they came to us in 1974 and we did it in, uh, for 76. So they sold this and then they bought a lot of other things from us. And unfortunately, I don't have anything else from the Smithsonian, but what I can tell you getting? now that I dropped that, I, I can tell you that when we did $8 million, we did a million with the Smithsonian. And then we started working with the Met and a lot of our most here, maybe I'll hold them up and you can Okay, you can beautiful go. scarves. This is mm, the... I remember this. Yeah, this, this is the... Um, the gates. The gates, but the... Um, all of a sudden I'm forgetting his, the Crystal? name. Crystal? What? Crystal. Thank you. Okay, so we did this for... Please. I don't know that any of you remember, but... There was a fabulous exhibit in the park, but they started it in the park, and Christo and his wife did that, and we changed this scarf and the color in the sky. I don't know how many times he made us change everything and everything. Finally came out to be fabulous. And they bought, my daughter said they bought 800, and I thought they bought 1,200. But I told them, and they didn't sell it at first, I told them when it went into the museum, 
They would sell all of it right away. They could even put it in their Christmas catalog and buy 12,000. Well, the first group sold out immediately, within days. And we, we didn't think we had one on frame, but we did have one, because I knew I had to bring this. Yes. So my daughter this found was, it. I, this was a tremendously exciting project. Everybody right. went to Central Park to see this. But, and it started in February. So you had to go to Central Park in the cold. But then it was in the cold till May, and then it opened. So we also continue to do a lot oh, with, yes, oh, you, you know, forgot to we wrap. forgot to take this, this out of the, the plastic. We did two shoe scarves for them, from them. Both were very, very successful and reordered several times. I'll hold you. You got to hold like this. Okay. <laughs> we'll hide ourselves. Right. This was one, and this was the second one. Both great. And we also ended up doing a million dollars with them with all of this. Mm. They're both, they're really great, both of them. Nothing like saying your own things aren't great. They right? are. It's such a unique color. Then this is another one. And this was, Lynn, my daughter, works with the Met, so she knew every name. But it was um, Leger. Uh -huh. Doesn't quite look like Leger, but anyway. <laughs> and we did a beautiful paisley. They had a paisley framed on the wall. And uh, we took it from that. And it really turned out to be beautiful. You know, Dorothy, in Europe now, every museum makes scarves. I know, I know. We should start trying to sell them. <laughs> and then this, I don't know what this was, but it's a great geometric. Let me see if it says on the back. No. But it's black on one side, white on the other, it's great looking. And it's double. So. Oh, and then this was great too. This was the Royal Elephant Square Shawl. Do you see it? And this was all, all different outfits that people wore. And it says, the angled hem, the little black dress, you know, you know the new look. And this is Toulouse Lautrec. This was this they repeated many, many times. Mm. Fabulous. Oh, and this is Toulouse Lautrec too. So I. And then this was a geometric. It's very pretty, but you know, it was not for a special occasion. But a lot of colors. A lot of these have 10, 15, 20, 25 colors in them. So then we have Chicago Art Institute, and this was this was Chagall. And they have the stained glass windows. Yes. But 
color. It's so luscious. No. So. Can you see it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this is MoMA. And with MoMA, we had a license with them for, um, Oh my God, I can't even. Where did it say this? Frank Lloyd, yeah, right. this was the only one that had the one with the license, Frank Lloyd Wright. But it was, it, they're really pens, but they did it as Frank Lloyd Wright, which I think it really looks good. Yes. In fact, we have something similar to it right now. And then these were geometrics that we did for MoMA. Hmm. But everything had to be kind of Frank Lloyd Wright look. And only in recent years have they started to do things for some of their uh, yeah. exhibits that they have. And now they don't have the Frank Lloyd Wright uh, license anymore. It's another geometric. This, these are all Frank Lloyd Wright, and I'm showing you now. And you could guess that they are, because. But there are different materials, and let's see. He was see. an innovative textile designer, and you've caught the yeah the excitement of it all. And. This is very exciting because I don't think people get a chance to see. There's all another of this. one. <laughs> and another one. Yeah. So maybe when you have your 100th birthday po uh, exhibit, <laughs> we'll yeah. show all these. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, this one, also, I don't remember this one. But Lynn told me it's definitely MoMA. So let's see what this says. MoMA. Yeah, I know it says MoMA. But I thought it might say what it is. But I'm thinking it was from a painting. Yeah, it looks a little Jackson Pollocky, maybe? Maybe, but no name. No. And then I brought some Echo that are really, I think, exceptional. And some of these have been done, a lot of these have been done by someone who works for us right now, who's a wonderful artist. And this is the jewelry scarf. Hmm. And actually, my grandson tricked me because he said, do I have any rings? And then he went to my daughter and my daughter-in-law because Stephen's wife is our home designer. And you know, you, you, it, it, Phyllis had said what we do. She designs all the home. And uh, so we showed him the rings, he photographed them, and intermixed in this jewelry scarf are our rings. Mm. I see it's called an echo heirloom. heirloom. Yes, so it, yeah. Does that mean it's based on an older design? Or, no, these or were all based on books that had jewelry. I see. And then intermixed are some of our rings in it. But I the see. main thing, I mean, it, it's a great design. I don't even know where it is, yeah. but it, it's somewhere in here. <laughs> Oh, here. These are my mother's wedding rings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then flowers always sell well. And we did, this is one of the flowers that we did. In fact, we have this hanging in our showroom because we're showing spring now. And around it are, they look like they're real, but are fake flowers that are like a frame to it. And it's really beautiful. We're going to have a busy time folding all these up. 
is another flower. With a bird in each corner. <laughs> and then here's, this is called Royal Blooms. So this is all done silk screened, right? Yes. Well, I'm not sure. Oh. Because I think it Some may be digital. Digital. Because okay. of the back. The, it the used to be silk screen. Silk screen. Well, we still do most things uh, silk screen. But the penetration in the digital is not as good as the silk screen. Oh. Usually it, the other side looks the same. See this? Mm -hmm. And this, it's a little different. I see. Mm. And here it is, right here. But actually, this is, this looks pretty good. You're going to think what we do are flowers. Now these are blooms of Oceana. Thank you. <laughs> and then one of my favorites is the tassel. It comes in three or four colors, but I have the black and white. They were the two best colors. The detail in this, the amount of colors. There are like 25 colors in this. It came in white too. I'm not going to open that up. Okay. <laughs> and then here were the teacups. Which is great looking too. All of these are collector's items. And then this is the parrots. See now look. This is, this is the right side, but the other side looks as good. So that I'm not gonna open. But that, I just, I wanted you to see a few of our best things that we do, you know. So, so but now we also do, we don't just do scarves. We do, as you said, cold weather, which is um, mufflers, hats, and gloves. That's a big business. And then in the gloves, Stephen, many years ago, invented the idea of touch glove. So we got, it took us three years to get the copyright. So everybody copied us. Like that, they were out there doing it. And then we sued everyone. <laughs> when we got the copyright and then everybody paid us except the two big people in the business they said they thought of it the exact same time so but we've done that you know and that has made a big difference in the that business so we have the cold weather the gloves hat and then last year when it was so cold we had still had stock left Everybody in October, November called us. We sold every glove we had. We sold also the mufflers and the hats, but every glove, we had nothing left. It was amazing. It was so funny. Our director of sales couldn't take the phone calls fast enough to. <laughs> so, but then we do outerwear now, which are ponchos, ruanas, capes, and that has become a big business. And then we do swim and um, cover-ups. And then we do bags that go with that. And then we do, um, uh, you know, I can't even think of all the names, pareos and, uh, and little tops that, now we just started, uh, we just, since you've been there, we did a, a festive occasion group for all dressy things and we have wraps and little jackets and little tops that really look great. 
but that was since you've been there. Uh huh. So is this all uh, uh, stimulated by this great uh, knowledge of textiles and, and design and prints? And uh, you must have a very gifted staff uh, at this we do. Point. We have designers. We have product developers. We have people who really know fabric, and and then you know, uh, all our top people are used to going. Like we go to Mongolia now for cashmere, and you know we we go all over the world to get the right product. So how many people uh, do we have? Yes. Uh, say 140, half are in the distribution center in New Jersey. We do all our shipping, all our finance from there. A lot of our IT is from there. And then in New York, we have the merchants, the, um, the designers, the product developers, the operations people who do a lot of that work with them and then you know secretarial duties and um, and then we also have IT people there and so yeah one of the things that impressed me a lot is the family the well it is nice to be able to work with your family and um, it, you know, I loved working with my father and my aunt, you know, and I, I was very close to both, and my father was always teaching me, and he was very strict about things, that everything, the door's open, it has to stay open if it's closed, you know, you have to be, do everything, but he taught me all of that, and you gotta know all the, all the towns, all the states, all the products, all the fabrications, and everything, so, um, you know, uh, and so the, then what happened, you know, is my father and my mother, then she came, went out and my aunt came, then my husband came before me, and then we worked together, and then just before he died, Lynn, who's older than Stephen, came in the business, and then Stephen promised him to, the week before he died that he would come in after school. So um, he did come in, and he also started going to NYU for business for his master's the next year. And then I decided that he shouldn't be there if he didn't want to be, because he's sitting at his father's desk, and this I didn't tell you. Did I tell you this? I did, okay. So she knows everything about me. <laughs> so. I told him that he should go away for a year. He said, funny that you suggested that because I applied to HEC, which is the Harvard Business School of, outside of Paris, and he went. And so my accountant, who was very supportive of me and helpful, said, pay for his education, but make him work when he's there. So, and I didn't want him in the business if he didn't want to be there. So he, uh, he got a job at Au Printemps, and he made all these friends, and now he has a lot of friends in France. Goes to Corsica every summer to visit one of them. <laughs> and, um, so, and then he wanted to come back. You know, and then, now I remember that then he said to me, by the time he came back, it was early 80s, and he said to me, you know, we should really have a designer, a full-time designer. We shouldn't all be doing it ourselves, and we shouldn't expect someone to come into color and everything. So he happened to know someone, and is someone that he had met who had been at RISD, and uh, that's Rhode Island School of Design, for those who don't know. And, uh, and I knew her because she sold me designs and I liked her. And her name is now Meg Roberts. 
So they ended up getting married, and which I was very happy about, but I should have known that they had something, but then they didn't. And anyway, they got together, she joined us, and then she did Ralph Lauren, all the, um, the work of the development, you know, worked with their designers and everything for the first few years before she started the home business. And when we started the home business, she does all of the home design. Right, and she and your son have written a number of books. Oh, they've written three books. She, she knows more than I know. They're right on my desk. <laughs> right. Well, what is so fascinating is that... Not on the desk, they're on the table. Um, you know. When you when someone like me, an outsider, comes and visits the company, right. I meet a lot other members of the family. And yeah, but well then, you know, my daughter is there. Right. She does the PR and the um, uh, all the publicity, advertising, all of that. And now we just hired a marketing uh, person, who a director of marketing, who she's working with too. But she also works with the Met, MOBA, and some does a lot of other things, does a lot of the photography, you know, uh, you know, setups and with the models and everything, right. so. So and now we have a fourth generation that just came in. He's Stephen's second son, and he is in product development for like everything. So we have to maybe regulate that a little better so he doesn't have so much. But anyway, he's great. And then his older brother did a whole photography setup of, of the, all us because we took all the pictures for our 95th, you know. So, uh, but he's not in the business. So no one else, just the one so far. Right. But it's great to have him. And it's great to work with your family. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's it's tremendously interesting for, right. from to an outsider. Right. To, yeah, because a lot of families don't get along, but we do, and we actually work very well together. And it, it's funny because what I didn't say is then when my husband died, because he was the president, even though my family owned the business. I made him the president, I was the secretary of the corporation. And then uh, when I took over, I, I had a feeling, because you know, there are not many women who were running businesses, even small businesses, and everybody was looking to see if I fell on my face, but we didn't. <laughs> I had a lot of support, you know, so. Um, right, is there, I mean, you have, you have a tremendous advantage point of, of observation of, uh, of the accessories business right. and the fashion business right. for so many years. Right. And um, I gather you found it tremendously exciting and fulfilling. I did. But Stephen kids that I don't have two children, I have three, that Echo is my third child. <laughs> And he's not sure if it's a favorite. <laughs> so what, what about this business has been so thrilling? Is it all of it? Uh, yeah, it's a whole thing like, you know, it's funny. We just had a lunch with someone for her 30th. She's a salesperson who's been with us 30 years. And then um, somebody who had been with us 12 years just came back to work with us on private label. And he just jumped in and, you know, he, he knows who we did do business with and who we don't. And then, anyway, he's just jumped in right away the first week. <laughs> so it's the uh, personal end of it, the staff relations, as well as making something very beautiful and making people happy. It's a combination. Yeah, well, we love our people who work for us and we try to have it the best, you know, uh, relationship that we can. And Stephen, uh, the other day, did a talk on the state of Echo and what's going on in New York. 
And then the next day he went to the DC to talk to everybody there and you know, tell them what's going on with all the stores and you know, I mean like you know all know about Lord and Taylor, which is one of our best customers and so and Bantan, you know, which was a good customer, went out of business. So this, there are a lot of people we did business with that have gone out of business. So well, is there anything else that we've left out that you'd like I to I don't talk think about? so. You wouldn't let me leave anything out. Okay. Well, I want to thank you very, very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. For this, uh, for this talk and also bringing all these beautiful things. Well, you know, it's funny. We have scholarships at five schools, and one of them is FIT. So we've always been very supportive of FIT. And I know Joyce and uh, so, um, and Joe, Joe, is it Joanne Arbuckle? That yes. I know her too. She, Joyce came up for lunch last year and she bought Joanne. So, and, um, but I, the funny thing is, I saw Dorothy Globus. Is she, she was here for years, but she's not here anymore. No. Well, there was a Dorothy Globus that went to college with me. So I don't know if she's the one uh -huh. who went to college with me. Could be. So, but I saw, because I looked, I looked at the names and, and the phone numbers and everything, and I had you in with that. So that's funny, and I saw that. Yes. So thank you very, very much. Well, thank you for having me, and good meeting both of you. And I'm glad you found me, or I found you. Okay. <laughs>